you really want to know, then come on, let's go. Take a stroll down those... What's happening everybody? Welcome into the Country Roads webcast brought to you by Trio 4 Productions. I'm your host Jordan Cruz. Back again to get you ready for West Virginia's second game of the season as they get ready to take on the Youngstown State Penguins. Saturday night at 6 o'clock. It's the home opener in Morgantown at Milan Puskar Stadium. Let's kick things off talking about uh, West Virginia's poll rankings this week. Uh, the polls came out earlier this week and West Virginia actually managed to move up three spots in both polls. Uh, in the coaches poll, they went from 20th last week to 17th now this week. And in the AP poll, they moved up three spots as well from 17th last week to now being ranked 14th in the country. So the Mountaineers sit at 1-0, uh, number 14 in the country, uh, preparing to take on the Youngstown State Penguins, who are 0-1 following their first game last week. It is the home opener. Um, Youngstown State is coached by Bo Pelini. He's now in his fourth season at Youngstown. West Virginia did take on this Youngstown State team uh, previously two years ago in 2016, and that was actually a, a closer game than people probably would have liked. Um, it was tied up 14-14 to at halftime. West Virginia ended up pulling away in the second half, getting a 38-21 to win in that one. Um, that Youngstown State team featured uh, quite a few players who are now in the NFL, and uh, the team they have this year is much different than that team, as that 2016 Youngstown State team actually went on to play in the FCS National Championship game that season. And the team they have this year is uh, inexperienced at a lot of positions. In their first game, they actually had 10 different first-time starters, as well as 18 players making their debut. They do still have some talented players, however, but as I mentioned, they did lose that week one game to Butler, and they sit at 0-1. Uh, in that game against Butler, they did hold a 21-7 lead in the fourth quarter, but uh, Butler really exploded on them in that fourth quarter and ended up kicking a game-winning field goal with only four seconds left to get the win over them, 23-21. to So they were pretty disappointed in that one. It's a game people expected them to win, and uh, – it's obviously going to be a different Youngstown State team than the one that came in here two years ago, but um, West Virginia still can't be overconfident and overlook this team or they'll give them another tough game like they did the last time they were in Morgantown. Despite this team not being as good as that one was back in 2016, the Mountaineers still got to stay focused and treat every opponent the same and try and go 1-0 and every week. Mentioned that Bo Pelini is the head coach in his fourth season. Um, this After this past season, the 2017 season, Youngstown State offensive and defensive coordinators both went on to take jobs at FBS programs and move up a level. So they are breaking in new coordinators on both sides of the ball this year. Um, on offense, they're breaking in Brian Christ, who had previously been their wide receiver coach there. And then on defense, they're going with co-defensive coordinators in Richard McNutt and Donald D'Alessio. McNutt had formerly coached the secondary, and D'Alessio had formerly coached the D-line. So all the coordinators they're breaking in have been at Youngstown State, so they are familiar with the program. And back-to-back uh, -back games, West Virginia will be taking on a team using co-defensive coordinators. <music> Mentioned a lot of these uh, Youngstown State players are, are new to the team, and uh, one of them is a grad transfer quarterback that they're starting this year and that's Montgomery Van Gorder. He's a senior. Uh, he'd been at Notre Dame previously, but he had uh, mainly just been a holder for them on, on field goals, but wanted to play some quarterbacks, so transferred over to Youngstown State after uh, finishing up a degree at Notre Dame. In their first game last week, which I mentioned was his starting debut, he went 18 of 27 for 234 yards and three touchdowns, so not too bad. Uh, the running back actually had a pretty great performance. He's also a senior. Uh, Tevin McCaster, and he had 29 carries for 166 yards. So you see they like to hand the ball off a lot with the uh, 29 carries to the running back there, and he uh, performed well with those carries. So the offense you're going to see from this Youngstown State team is actually pretty similar to what Tennessee tried to do and uh, play power football. They like to establish the run, and they're going to try and play ball control and control the clock and keep the West Virginia offense off the field. 
much like Tennessee did to limited success as they held West Virginia only 61 snaps, but their defense couldn't get stop, stops in those snaps as West Virginia produced, you know, the 40 points and only the 61 snaps against Tennessee. And I think I'd expect that Youngstown State um, – We'll have some three and outs. If the West Virginia defense is focused like they were last week, which I expect them to be, um, if they can stop the Tennessee running game as they held Tennessee to only 129 rushing yards, I don't see why they can do, uh, can't do something similar to this Youngstown State offense. And um, the ball control thing may not work as well as Youngstown State would like it to. And I think the West Virginia offense should be able to be efficient like they were in that second half of that Tennessee game for pretty much primarily this entire game, I believe. Mentioned they have a similar offensive style to what Tennessee tried to do in the first week and, you know, establish the run and, and run the ball a lot. And their first game did show that as they had 39 rushing attempts versus only 27 passing attempts. However, the yardage from those uh, attempts was actually pretty balanced as they managed 235 rushing yards and 234 passing yards. So that's almost as balanced as you can get there yardage-wise. And the offense did roll up 469 total yards. So this offense, uh, you know, of course it was Butler, but this offense has some players that can make some plays. And the defense needs to come in hungry like they did last week and focused uh, to get some stops on this Youngstown State team. Or they will score some, they can score a few points and put up some yards on this West Virginia defense if they're not ready. On defense, Youngstown State will run a 4-3 alignment. And they are led by star middle linebacker, senior Armand Delavade. And he has made 30 consecutive career starts for them. This game against West Virginia will uh, be his 31st consecutive career start, so he's been there for a while. The defense was breaking in uh, a lot of those newcomers as well, especially in the secondary where they lost two to graduation. But also earlier this year, they lost their starting strong safety, Kyle Hedges, to a torn ACL. And he was replaced in game one by a senior, Teray Bryant, but Teray Bryan is actually a guy who played linebacker for them last season in 2017 and has had to convert to safety due to the uh, lack of depth there and injury concerns. And so that doesn't bode well for the secondary going up against Will Greer in this passing offense. And um, Will Greer in this passing offense should be able to uh, make some hay against this uh, Youngstown State secondary as they're breaking in a couple new corners as well as uh, the strong safety being a converted linebacker. Their uh, defense did hold Butler to... 86 yards on only th on 31 carries, so the run defense seemed pretty stout in week one, and we'll see if West Virginia can test that this week. You'd like to see West Virginia get the run game going this week. Um, it performed pretty well last week, but I think you'd like to see it uh, improve off of that and, and take it to another level against this Youngstown State team, hopefully. As far as what I'd like to see from West Virginia in this game, um, I think the main thing is, as I mentioned, don't overlook this team. Um, you know, as Coach Halverson mentioned, FCS programs beat FBS programs all the time. Don't fall victim into that trap and, and be one of those teams. Stay focused, treat it like any other game, and, you know, build off last week's performance and, and improve yourself even more week to week, um, especially when you got a, a really good one coming up next week and a big one on the road taking on NC State. Um, you always hear that teams improve the most from game one to two, and hopefully we see that as well from West Virginia, and they look even better than they did in the week one matchup. Um, in the first half, the offense wasn't as efficient. You hope to see the efficiency that the offense had in the second half uh, carry on for this entire entire game and put, and put together a complete performance against this Youngstown State team. And I think if they do that and, and they're focused, that they can uh, roll up some points and roll up some yards on this Youngstown State team, and the defense can hold them as well. Mentioned in the defense, I think as far as they're concerned, you know, facing a similar style offense that Tennessee ran, you want them to have a similar type performance. You want them to come out focused. You want them to get into the backfield. You want to see Kenny Bigelow make some plays. You want to see Reese Donahue, Jabril Robinson. You want to see all those D linemen get into the backfield like they did last week against Tennessee and not take this team lightly and uh, treat them with the same respect that they treated Tennessee with and give 100% effort, especially on defense. I mean, offense as well, but defense with this team uh, wanting to try and establish the run, don't allow them to do so, uh, force them to get behind the chains and turn them into more of a passing offense than they'd like to be, force them three and outs, get your offense on the field where they can put up those points and uh, pull away in this game. Also, I think I'd like to see that the defense improve their tackling. Um, last week, you've seen them struggle at times, especially, you know, in that when Tennessee had those longer drives, um, they missed some tackles that they should have made. Uh, 
they hit some guys in the backfield on stops on what have been third and shorts, and they let them fall forward and get the first downs. I think you want to see improved tackling, um, especially from your secondary. Uh, you've seen the secondary miss a few tackles there, and you need those guys to really be able to rally to the ball and, and tackle the guys when they make the catch. Um, as a whole, you want to see improved corner play. Um, corner play was not bad in week one, but uh, there was times it was uh, very, it was lacking. Uh, Tennessee hit on a lot of those out routes and comeback routes, and you want to see them step it up a little bit and, uh, and improve this defense as a whole because those corners need to be prepared because next week, as I mentioned, you're going on the road to Raleigh to take on NC State, who has a terrific quarterback in Ryan Finley and will be a test for this defense, especially for this secondary. And this game's a game for them to improve and hone their skills before going into that big matchup on the road against NC State and a pretty good passing offense. Then I think you also want to see how the Sam linebackers look in this game following the injury in game one and losing Charlie Minton for the season. Um, you want to see Shea Campbell get in there, and you want to see X Relo get in there, and you want to see how they're going to perform and you know get hone their skills as well and uh, improve their play so they can just continue to progress as the season goes on because you're going to really need those guys to step up now with the loss of Charlie Bitten. The depth chart released earlier this week showed X Relo at the as the first teamer. Um, Coach Tony Gibson has came out and said there was a mistake in there somewhere. He's going to play, you know, probably about 20 snaps a game, but that Shea Campbell is going to be the starter there. As far as when they go into the 3-3-5, he's going to be the Sam linebacker that comes out first on the field, and you're going to see him split time with um, Exry Lowe, the converted safety redshirt freshman. Um, Campbell's more experienced, been here longer, um, not as athletic as Exry Lowe, who was a converted safety, played uh, cornerback in high school, but um, he knows the system better right now. But I think you'll see both those guys get playing time, and that'll be good. They need to they need that playing time to be able to progress and get used to this scheme and get used to playing more snaps than they were expecting to play this season. And hopefully it's next man up there at Sam Linebacker, and these guys can get some experience in this game and be ready for the rest of the season. I mentioned on offense, I think that I'd like to see them be more efficient from you know, the whole game, play a complete game from beginning to end. Um, I'd like to see a more effective run game. Uh, I think you should come out and try and establish the run on these guys and um, hopefully don't see too many punts in this game. I feel like our offense has a uh, distinct advantage over their defense, especially with what they've lost in the secondary. And um, I think that if all goes according to plan, the offense can roll up some yardage and put up some points. And hopefully you don't see Will Greer too much in the second half and m maybe get him a series or two in the third quarter then get him out of there which leads into the next thing that I'm hoping to see from West Virginia, and that's see some of these new guys play, especially Jack Allison at quarterback. I think that a lot of people um, are excited about what he could bring for the future and want to see where he's at right now. Um, almost got to see him last week as Will Greer had his helmet knocked off against Tennessee, but Will Greer was really in a rhythm, so Dana took a timeout to keep Will in there. But this week I do believe you'll see Jack Allison get in there and play, and we'll see what he can do in this second half, I believe. And, you know, with this new redshirt rule, you may even see a guy like Trey Lowe come in there and uh, play some snaps. And some of these other uh, true freshmen that may end up redshirting, you may see them get some snaps in this game, though, because, you know, with that new redshirt rule, they can play in up to four games and, and still be able to redshirt. So I think that if, if, if there's any game on the schedule you're going to look to maybe put those guys in there and see how they react and see how they play, it's probably going to be towards the end of this game where you may see some of these true freshmen get in there. So, you know, I think it'll be good for West Virginia to hopefully get to see what some of these guys that we haven't seen before, um, see what they look like and see how they perform. Um, guys like Jack Allison and, and Trey Lowe and maybe Sam James at receiver and Randy Fields and, and guys like that and, and, and Bryce Wheaton and, and just see how they do in this game. And same thing for the defensive side. Hope we could see a guy like Quantel Reigns get in there. And some of these freshmen who may go on to redshirt later in the season, but hope we get to see them uh, get some playing time in this game and at least get a glimpse of those guys and see where they're at and, and how they look. As far as my prediction for this game goes, I feel like the Mountaineers should score early and often, and um, I think they shouldn't have too much trouble. This Youngstown State team has been very talented in the past, and they still have some talented players in this team, but they're not at the level they've been you know, the past uh, couple of years. They took a step back last year. They went 6-5. and five. Um, This year I mentioned they lost to a Butler team in week one that a lot of people expected them to beat. Um, so, you know, they are going to come in hungry, though, because, you know, that FBS team gets these – FCS is fired up to, you know, show what they can do on a bigger stage and, and pull upsets. But I think West Virginia will be prepared. Um, with the team that West Virginia has, the older players and the more mature players, they should have no trouble staying focused, I feel like, and they should be able to win this game handily. 
I think the defense, if they can hold Tennessee to the 129 rushing yards and, and hold Tennessee's offense like they did, there should be no reason they shouldn't be able to hold this Youngstown State offense to 14 points or even less. Even if you get some second and third teamers in there later in the game, they should still be able to hold their own. And then, like I said, on offense, I think they'll come out um, more efficient in the first half and um, hopefully you know, have a pretty big lead by halftime and not have to see the starters play too many snaps in the second half. And as far as my score prediction for this one, I'm going to say West Virginia puts up eight touchdowns and they, if they held Tennessee to 14. I think they can hold Youngstown State lower than that. So my prediction is West Virginia 56, Youngstown State 10. That will pretty much wrap us up here on the Country Roads webcast. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back early next week to recap this game. And then, of course, later in that week as well to preview the upcoming game against NC State, the first true road game of the season. Should be a good contest. And I'm excited to see the Mountaineers come out here again Saturday and get to watch them play again as they are 1-0 now and hopefully get to see them move to 2-0 on the season against this Youngstown State team in the home opener. It's a, it's a night game. Well, evening game really is starting at 6. It'll start in daytime. But by the time it's over, it'll be dark, though. So basically a night game. And, you know, us Mountaineer fans, we thrive on that. We love to see this team play at night at home. And didn't get to see too many of those in the past year or two. So that's good that we're starting off a home opener with one of those this season. And I'm excited to see it. That being said, thanks for tuning in. This has been the Country Roads webcast brought to you by True 4 Productions. I'm your host, Jordan Cruz. If you haven't already, follow us on Twitter at WVU Country Roads. And as always, let's go Mountaineers. <laughs>